Hey folks, this is Colin at the Dog Line. I would like to introduce you to someone who uses our elite little dog bark collars. This is Gerda, uh, who's actually a friend of our family. And um, Gerda had a few concerns about what was happening with Layla and Indy and the barking because um, you have to leave them with someone else. Is that right, Gerda? Yes, basically. Uh, we always had to make sure we leave a TV on or we had to lock them in a room because the neighbours were giving us a real hard time about the dogs. Um, even though we thought they weren't barking when we were not at the house, they were. So we had to use all kinds of measurements to get them to not bark. Right, look, you're not the only one, Gerda. We, we don't get people, as I've said a few times, uh, we do not get people um, calling us to uh, say they want a bark collar because they think their dog's going to look good in a bark collar. They actually call us because they've tried everything. Uh, and uh, they have no more choice because they've got the rangers knocking on the door, they've got their neighbours giving them a hard time as well, and two things that often pop up, they don't want to um, stop the dog barking altogether and they don't want to do any sort of harm to the dog as well. So uh, what was your situation? Who was complaining? Well, apart from my neighbours, and then um, it's actually my children's dogs, um, so eventually when they moved out, they had the same similar problem because obviously they work long hours, and sometimes the dogs were at home for quite a few hours. So they had all, also used different measurements. We used the things that hurt the dogs, well, not hurt the dog's ears, but it's supposed to it have an effect on the dog's ears. That didn't work. And uh, I had a barking collar sitting in my cupboard for a very long time, but didn't feel like using it because I, everyone told me that it's such a terrible thing until I met, met you, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> so look... I've just done a hashtag there, four-legged grandchildren. These are my children's dogs, and I'm, I'm looking after them. So that's, uh, that's a hashtag we can share, folks, if you can. Uh, now, the, um, the interesting thing you said there is you tried other methods as well. So you did try the ultrasonic one, and it didn't work for your dogs. I certainly tried the ultrasonic. I tried all kinds of measures. Um, I've had the dogs in my house for many years, obviously, with the kids growing up. And, uh, yes, we, we the neighbours didn't like us very much because of the dogs and they were threatening us and we had rangers and oh my uh, goodness it was really not fun yeah no it sounds like a real nightmare because of dogs but i can understand that because you know sometimes people work during the night and want to sleep during the day and if your dogs you think they are lovely dogs and they don't bark maybe when you're not at home um but when you're at home they don't bark but they became quite annoying because even when the front door went it was horrible yeah yeah, no, I, I, um, I hear that quite a lot. And uh, you know what? We get a lot of people that come to us who have actually tried a lot of methods before and they haven't worked. Everything from uh, putting the dogs inside to um, coming home at lunchtime and walking the dogs, etc. So who have you got there? This is Layla. This is Layla. Oh, she's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Hello, Layla. How are you? Yes, I'm talking to you, young lady. Um, okay. And then Indy is, is somewhere else to be found. So, oh, there we go. Indy is her little baby. Oh, and, so Indy's um, the baby yeah. and Layla is mum. Okay, that's fantastic. Good stuff. And, okay, the big thing people want to know when it comes to electronic collars, you mentioned that you tried the ultrasonic ones. Now, with two dogs involved, that quite often doesn't work because they feed off each other and one dog will activate the unit and the other dog will end up suffering. So I don't recommend that. Um, I do, however, for a, a smaller dog, and you know what? Your dogs aren't that small. We have other collars on dogs that size, but I believe we chose that product because of some of the safety features involved in the product, which I'll go through in a minute. But did you notice any detrimental effect on your dog's personality after you started the training program that we put you on? No, once you put me on that program, I, we were all quite confident to see what the collars were going to do. Very good. Um, so I tried it on Layla, Layla the mum, first because uh, Indy can become quite neurotic. If anything hurts her or she's feeling uncomfortable, she goes into complete shakes and she can get quite upset with life. So right. we thought to run it on uh, Layla first. And when we realized Layla would start barking, like take three barks or something, and then she'll realize, oh, something's not right something's uncomfortable, but never complained or cried or do anything like that. She just would turn around in her steps and walk into the house and didn't actually pursue in barking anymore. She, they used to even bark that badly when I used to walk with them along the beach. Yep. They would bark at other dogs. Now they don't bark at all. In fact, mm. I walk off the collars now 
Yeah. And um, they've actually been trained now to not actually having to have the collars around their necks when I go walking anymore. They, in fact, a pleasure. I used to have to strangle them to stop barking. <laughs> we'll cut that. <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that so no one hears that you strangled your dogs. They might take it the wrong way, eh? So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really interesting because we, we have a lot of people, particularly with the remote training collars as well, they don't want to walk their dogs because it's just not a lot of fun. And if you have dogs that are barking their head off, it's very embarrassing as well. So congratulations, that's good. Now, the training guide that we supply, obviously that's a trade secret, but it's about low-impact training on the dog so they don't get any detrimental effects and that has to be controlled as well. So, over, so instantly you had no dramas initially and no ongoing concerns about using the collars on your dog. No, in fact, uh, we had the collars on uh, on Layla, the collar on Layla for two days, and we saw such a change in Layla that I contacted you straight away for a second collar because I realised if Layla is, she was even at night time walking, sleeping with the collars, and um, because we just kept it on for six weeks for training, yep. and now we take them off as soon as we get home. We actually take the collars off, and they're fine without the collars. It's just when we're not at home, we keep the collars on. Okay, no worries. I'm just going to put a note up, and this is about irritation on the dog's skin, okay, because you mentioned you followed our program and you went through that process. And this little note, guys, is about keeping the collars on the dog, but you must check the skin. There is something called an irritation. Uh, occasionally, one in every thousand dogs might have a... Um, uh, what's it called, an allergy to the nickel in the in the probes that touch the dog's skin. But if people don't take the collars off, check the dog's skin and make sure there's no irritation or rubbing sore. It can get infected. And the collars tend to get blamed for that. It's called a necrosis. Nothing the collar is doing is just an infection and then it comes down to normal dog hygiene. So looks like you followed the rules quite well there, Gerda. Well done. Well, to be honest, Colin, I never took the collars off because they never bothered the dogs, and then we decided to start taking them off. So I never had Perfect, ir yeah. any irritation. Whatsoever. Well, look, you can leave the collars on 24-7, provided you're making sure you check the skin, which you obviously did, and, and that sort of thing. I like that sort of element of the dogs get so used to having the collars on, but the proviso is you make sure you move them around and check the skin that there's no irritation, and that comes down to getting a good quality collar that, that is not mm -hmm. having to be done up too tight to the cause those irritations in the first place so that's really good okay so after that I think you've already answered my next question what was life like after the collars it sounds like you had one for Layla uh, you came back and got another one for Indy and now we're obviously a few months down the track you 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 have to leave your dogs with people and when you go overseas uh, all going well there Yes, no, um, look, the dog's living with uh, my daughter now, and um, they have now a doggy door where they can go in and out as they please. Um, she's, because she moved into a new home, she asked the neighbors to please tell her if the dogs are okay, and she said to them that she's busy training them, and uh, they've been fantastic. No complaints from the neighbors, friendly neighbors, happy neighbors, happy dogs, happy owners. <laughs> Very good, exactly. And you know what? That's what it's all about. It's about building healthy relationships between uh, dogs and animals. So uh, that, that's really fantastic. Now, I'll give a bit of a rundown of the one that you purchased so that people can see. This is actually the Pet Safe Elite Little Dog um, bark collar. Uh, it has two things which are very, very important to you as well. Um, something called dual activation. So that means that the collar won't go off accidentally if the dogs knock it because it needs vibration and it needs sound at exactly the same time to activate. Uh, so there's a little hole at the top of the collar and when it's activated you have to blow into that hole to test it. You can see that there. Nice little shot for PetSafe. Uh, PetSafe, you owe me a carton of beer um, for uh, the free advertising. Um, now, the next thing is the, uh, the dual activation. So there's the vibration detectors along there. So it's activating on two, two things. This also has temperament learning. So the interesting thing is it increases gradually. The more the dog barks, the higher it goes. And I'm just looking for a five cent piece. One of my team is going to throw me five cents any, in a minute now. Um, the more the dog barks, the higher it goes. And eventually it learns that the dog, the dog doesn't like level number three. So the collar will stay at number three and it'll come in if the dog continues barking. So that's a really good feature for this product. Uh, and then what you can do is you can reset it. So as the dogs are trained, they need less and less correction. So you can reset it and the lights will flash funny colors. I've already done a video on this one. So when you turn it off and you turn it on, the lights come on. Uh, where are we going? And then you turn it off and on again and it will st uh, flash five times. That's in the, in the uh, um, in the, the, uh, the, the manual on how to do the reset. It will flash five or six times and then when you rub the collar and you blow into the bottom, 
it shows you that it goes off. And you'll see that that light is a very quick, short little one, so it's not an e a long correction. It's just like a little tap on the shoulder, a bit of a reminder. Tap, you've done your bark, that sort of thing. Do they still bark? Have we taken away the bark all com completely, or, or can they still bark? No, that's the nice thing is... Um I mean, why do we have dogs for security, right? Um, and, um, you know, to tell you that someone's maybe at the door, so they like to bark. They'll bark like three times, four times. Okay, so they did, uh, so they're still barking. They bark four, times. four times, yes, and then usually they just growl. Rightio. Okay, so we've reduced a long session of barking down to a, a, a bark, yes. bark, bark, and that's the end of that. So it's ex under the, the window of acceptable level of dog barking, so that's fantastic. Yes. All yes, right. That's great, Gerda. Tell us a bit more about um, uh, Indy and Layla. No, I, I just, um, it's wonderful for me because I, uh, I live in South Africa now and my children live here and it's lovely to come here every time seeing how much the dogs have improved. Um, since August last year, actually, 2018, I remember putting the collars on and we were holding thumbs and crossing toes and hoping that everything's <laughs> going to be positive and um, we have not looked back. So. I've advertised it walking along the road where people ask me what's around their necks and I've been telling them. And now I'm sure you have had a few calls from friends of mine who's already um, trying to approach you for the collars as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, and that's much appreciated as well. Yes, because that is the most important is, um, you know, if people get the message out there, it's amazing how many people are struggling with the same problem I had. That, and you know what? There's a lot of people that we find as well that... Um, uh, in a situation, they've actually tried other products, so they've been brave enough to go down the same road you did, but the products <laughs> failed because they didn't get the right advice, so that's another thing as well. Hey, Gerda, thanks very much for that input. That was really good, and uh, do have a good chip, trip, and if you need anything, let us know, and thanks for telling your friends, eh? No worries, Colin, and thanks. It was lovely speaking to you, and thank you for making my dogs happy dogs. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Gerda. <laughs> See you later. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.